You know, I went to check the temperature on my air conditioner to see why it was so hot here. It wound up being uh, 74 degrees or some shit. And I was like, wow, it was hot up in here. I had to take off both of my sweaters. I didn't think it was gonna get hot in this particular room, let alone the rest of this apartment. Usually it's like almost like 50 something degrees or sometimes 40 something degrees. I always have to cover up or whatever it is. Gosh. So I swear. Mother, nat Mother Nature and temperature is a trap. Alright, so for this video, I want to talk about the reference monitors that have been uh, discontinued by a lot of the, uh, the pro audio companies uh, out and there. And so far, I have found five that I know of that I've actually uh, have been around and or uh, messed with or played with. And you actually don't see these monitors around anymore. These are like actual professional competition, um, you know, studio monitors and um, you know, these were out, you know, they were big back in the early 2000s, late 90s. Back when, you know, everybody wanted good quality sound. And they still actually just want good quality sound. Right? It was like before the, you know, dawn of the next decade where now everything is portable. So with this one, I'll give you my top five reference monitor. This is something that not a lot of people would necessarily understand unless they were like musicians or they were sound technicians or they had anything to do with music and or uh, sound or signal flow or they were studio assistants and like music studio assistants and things like that so let's go ahead and get started so the first one is the the Mackie 626 or should I say the Mackie HR 626 if you're a sound technician or if you're a musician or if you're even remotely a singer or some kind, if you've been around music, you know what uh, the Mackie products are. So the first set of products that came out were a Mackie. <clears throat> or or uh, first set of widely known products uh, that came out when uh, at the dawn of the century, the Behringers and things like that. So the Mackie 626 was like the prime um, set of reference monitors to use for any kind mixing, of mixing, recording, things like that. So these particular monitors actually had two uh, subs in the, the tweeter in the middle. Instead of having just one point of sound in them, you actually had like an actual line, like a spatial line. So you know you can't, you don't didn't have to just you know sit in one particular spot just to hear that pristine sound. You, there's actually a line that you can actually hear. So it's less guesswork and less positioning and uh, all of that nature. Now with the specs, you had a 6.7 inch uh, woofer on both sides, or excuse me, uh, all four of the, the speakers there. And the, the, the base, or should I say the reference base, isn't too hard or too soft. It matches the rest of the, the, the mid and high end frequencies. So you can really hear the, the crisp sound without all the, the rumbliness and the, the noise and all that. Now, stuff. in addition to the sound, the speakers themselves were, they were practically stylish uh, for the studio. You could just walk in. The visual aspect of it was practically no BS with that. It was, it was straight, it was forward, it was front, it was center. You knew what you was about to hear when you when they were turned on and it was ready to go. Especially with that square design with those two circles there, it's, it's you know, you, it was ready for you when you walked in the door. Now on the back side, when you, obviously when you turn it around, you have the uh, basic connectors. The first set is, well the main input is actually the XLR. So you know, if you have a bunch of XR cables that are, you know, heavy duty and needs a lot of, you know, signal or crisp signal, that heavy signal, uh, the XLR is pretty much uh, great for that. The next thing is if you don't have any XLR cables, you have like a, some kind of a studio that you have to set the up. The cables that you have aren't available. Then you have the phono, which is the headphone jack, or you have the RCA. So you have RCA, XLR, and phono that you can choose from. And now on top of that, you can also choose from the type of space that you would like to have, from acoustic to big room space, or if you have actually set up right, you can have filters to filter out um, any sort of noise, basically you know, a signal cutoff at a certain point. If you want to hear a particular sound coming out of there when you're mixing or mastering a track, mainly max mastering, uh, you want to make sure that you have the the right sound for you know somebody to listen to a type of music on ten dollar speakers or ten dollar um, headphones or whatever it is. So that definitely works. 
So these are the kind of speakers that were the, in, uh, in their prime at the time, but they basically didn't last now, long. These were actually really expensive. Like these were not your everyday uh, run of the mill. Oh, I'm just gonna buy my guitar center uh, <laughs> and set them up in my house kind of a deal. These were about uh, six racks, somewhere around there, five or six racks. So you had to be a true musician and you had to have the kind of money to actually purchase those things. Um, unfortunately, obviously, like I said, they were discontinued and you're not gonna really find them anymore unless you can find them used as say like Sam Ash or uh, Star Audio Sound or something like that. But these were like really quality sounds from uh, Mackie. Uh, so Mackie isn't as well known as it was during the the early 2000s and late 90s, but at that time, everybody wanted Mackie. That was number one. By the way, you can probably get them used for like $1,100 or something like that now, but at the time they were like really expensive. So you probably can get them for a steal now. Now we have the JBL M2 Master Reference Monitors. Now these ones actually cost uh, about, <laughs> about six racks. <laughs> these, just like the the HR 626s, you find them in a the studio. Exact same deal. Quality sound, the whole nine. Anything of what you would expect out of a competition studio model as you would, you would get out of JBL. Now, JBL, I've actually been a fan of for about, I'd say about a good seven, eight years. All the way up until the point until Samsung practically bought them out. But I digress about that. Now, this is what at the time where JBL was like the, the top of the top of professional audio gear before they started doing like headphones and portable speakers of you know you know those little wearable speakers that you have if you're bike riding or whatever it is these master reference monitors are they have they're in contrast with the 626s now they have two subwoofers and two tweeters you have the two that's on the top and then you have the tweeters at the bottom i believe it is or it might be reverse. Nope, I'm sorry, I actually have that backwards. The tweeters at the top, then you have the sub bass, and then you have the air release Sigma Jigs. Now, this particular model is not like the HR626. This one's actually the uh, the point where you actually have to position yourself so you can hear it, or position the speakers where you hear it. So, with this model, pristine sound, just as always, unique design. On the back side, you don't have your average connecting XLR or phono or RCA. This was straight wire. This is like raw putting the the coil around the the, the ring you remember that you, if some, some of your older heads remember that stuff you have to you know they actually put that and in you hope you didn't shock yourself while you're doing that <laughs> blow out the amp or the speaker Boom, you know? so uh -huh. like, yeah on the back side you had those connections and you could put four of those things in there so this is where you had you know like bigger cables that you have to ring around and screw them in but these handled higher and heavy, du heavy duty signals. So if you had wave files that you wanted to play at a particular sound and you, you, you had a, like a bigger room, slip those things right into the back, it would still produce a full sound for like maybe 15 people in the room and everybody could hear the, the, the bass. That's but there. like I said before, it's like a point basing. So you have to stand a certain way in order to hear the sound. So it is mo more focused. But just like the, the 626 is definitely made out of high quality materials. Just as a you know, I mean, JBL is known for making high quality materials for expensive prices. So. This is definitely a set to have for any studio. Unfortunately, also this is discontinued in, pla in place of the, the Eon models that you permission from buy from Guitar Center, Sam Ash, b &H Photo, Amazon practically, all of the sites now. Just mind you, Mackie and JBL, they don't sell directly like they used to because of inventory issues and people, customers sending things back, blah, 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 blah. So obviously you know how that goes. They sell to the merchants and the merchants handle all that stuff. So that's number two. All right, so the next one up was number three is Behringer. And there's some of the most prime ones that they have is The Truth, the, basically the Truth series. Uh, the most prime ones that they have is the B209, which is basically the truth. <laughs> These monitors were actually significantly less and you can actually put them on uh, the desktop. Still pristine sound at a, at a smaller scale. These you can actually put in your home if you're like a aspiring bedroom producer or DJ or musician or whatever it is. Just plug and play. It could be either XLR or Phono. And these are the actually two at the, uh, or not, I'm sorry, not Phono. 
Um, quarter inch. So XLR and quarter inch. These two are the only two that you can actually plug in to the B292. And this, this particular model, it can be used as a, either a subwoofer or a side chain model. Or, yeah, or you can practically daisy chain with other speakers. That was, was actually really cool at the time. So with this model, you can actually tweak the phase mod. <laughs> Tweak the phase modulator, so you can have a, a different kind of a sound with that. You can also modify the input trim and the room compensator. So depending on how big your room is, you can modify the, 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 the speaker according to exactly where you're going to put it or how you're going to position it, which was basically making it highly customizable. So you had three switches for three positions for three reasons. It was prime at this time. And, or should I say it was, I don't want to say it was years ahead of his time. It was something that was highly desired during that time from uh, B-Ringer. So unlike the HR626 and the JBL M2, which were both expensive at the time, you can set this up in any position needed and it would still sound great as far as like the bass and the mid. This go. one was actually affordable. It was 200 or it was like two or three bills. So if you're on a budget, or should I say a rolling budget, you would be able to get something like this. And that was uh, basically number three. Definitely on the top of my list. That was, you know, on the discontinued items list. So number four was the SDJ08 from a well-known manufacturer. You know them, you love them. It's Pioneer. So these monitors were actually the mighty, the mighty boxes. And these were made back in early 2000s, I believe. They were just like the Behringer's as well as the, the Mackie's and the, the JBL's. This model was actually not as cheap as the, the B202's from uh, Behringer. So $600 price tag would kind of set you back unless you actually had the money to get something like this. So definitely sit them onto the desktop, sty stylish looking. And then on the back side, you can put in the TRSs, which is the headphone jack, the XLRs, or the RCAs, both of which you can uh, hook them up as um, doubles instead of singles. And what I mean by that is red and white, or if you have like yellow and white or something like that, if you have older cables or black and white, something like that. So you can switch easily between the two if if you have audio interfaces, or excuse me, uh, mix boards that only have a, a specific line output, so, or if you don't have like uh, cable convert, uh, converting cables. With those, you could easily uh, switch cables out or have it set up, especially if you if you have XLR, you have, have it as a main line, which is a, actually a better quality sound, excuse me. I almost forgot that this point. was pretty much like the up like the upgraded version of like lower quality speakers like so if you feel like an intermediate uh, producer you would get a, a pair like these so these were the um, pristine at, a, a, at its time and definitely was competition you do have to position them correctly so you can hear the sound just like the rest unlike of them. the HR 626s so um, these are, are, are point based just like the other two but at the same time they still kick out that pristine sound that's why they were called the mighty boxes number five last but not least now this particular model I've actually been after for ages I would say a good uh, almost five years six years you guys know them you guys love them it's m audio and this is the ex66 now with this model even if you did have the money that was it was hard to find because a lot of folks did not want to give them up <laughs> and the minute one was go the one goes up for sale or auction somewhere somebody else buys it just like that now this particular model is just like the hr626 it's line based. In addition to it being line based, unlike the, the 626, this model actually had XLR, Phono, as well as RCA. The 626 model didn't have that, let alone the, um, the M2. Not to mention, it also had its own volume uh, tuning option as well. So it's, it's, um, it's powered straight out the wall. So it, it basically can function by itself in its own AC power. It's cut, it's, uh, it has its own gain and it has three different uh, lines, line ins. And it's a whole hell of a lot cheaper than the, re um, the other two, the, the M2 from JPL and the HR626. The EX66 had a stylish design. 
could slip it into the wall and it still would look great. It was lightweight. It was, the materials were strong. It wouldn't just go out as easily. You knew what you was putting your money into. Now, if you were to get your hands on either one, uh, on this particular model, consider yourself valuable because a lot of M Audio fans, or should I say Midi Man fans, um, wanted this uh, specific set because of its line capabilities. You didn't have to have a point based like a lot of uh, other smaller reference monitors. It was just like the 626. <clears throat> it was uh, it was line based, so it took out a lot of guesswork on where you're supposed to sit and how you're supposed to position it. And the that. sound was it was just as pristine, just as pristine as the JBL. tweet was in the middle. You had the two subs there. It was great. When I first heard the sound out of these particular models, unlike the other four, I was blown away. Now, obviously, a lot of the newer models came out, and you won't find something like the ex 6 out anymore from M Audio. You may find a set like this from a smaller cop or from a, a smaller player, but you will not find these anymore exactly because that is, I, don't, I don't know why M Audio decided to stop them all together. But the prime, uh, they were definitely the star of its prime. Now you can definitely find these models by doing a simple Google search. But because I had my experience from, I, I knew something about these models, and um, I just didn't know exactly the exact specs, so I had to do a little bit of a Google search myself just to make sure I knew what I was talking about but definitely look these up do a quick uh, YouTube and Google search you definitely find me doing them um, since that time, time so. of the of the multi thousand dollar speakers um, a lot of the smaller ones came out for um, producers and musicians so they can get their hands on like you know better stuff I mean, as the saying goes, it gets it's better, smarter, faster, and more powerful and cheaper tomorrow. So. But I missed those particular models because it had competition level sound, and they were revered by big time artists and big time producers and show textmen. Show textmen, and if DJs had them too, definitely with them. But these were big time, you know, speakers. They were professional competition level speakers. So I'm gonna wrap that up. So I wanna. Um, I, meant, I had meant to talk about this before, but I forgot to do so. Headlock is basically going to consist of basically professional audio gear and some customer level audio gear and some social light kind of a relocking type setting. So um, that's pretty much what I'm gearing it towards for. So it's, it's uh, social and audio at the, at, at infused into one. That's why I had to get, I wanted to get rid of the, uh, the previous two channels. I'm so. gonna try to keep cranking out more videos like this. So definitely just uh, uh keep watching and um i'm gonna try my best to, to move it forward and they'll grow